How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Today, we're discussing the Yankees' bullpen, why it could be the best bullpen in baseball in 2023. Now, we have a lot of great pieces coming back. Obviously, you lose Aroldis Chapman, you lose Zach Britton and Miguel Castro. We just traded Lucas Lickey uh, for Caleb Durbin and Indigo Diaz from the Atlanta Braves, two pretty decent prospects. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're ways away from contributing, if ever contributing. Diaz is an interesting player I think that, Ryan, we should probably talk about maybe tomorrow. Um, you know, getting back a 24-year-old bullpen arm with his type of velocity and stuff is definitely a good haul to get back for a 35-year-old lefty bullpen arm in Licky, who uh, Steamer Projections only say he's going to pitch about 10 innings next year. So they're anticipating a big drop-off in uh, usage for the Yankees. So good time to trade him, get some value, some decent prospects in return from Atlanta, who have just been killing it the last couple of years and uh, one of the best uh, you know prospect systems in baseball. So looking ahead towards this bullpen, though, Yankees still have a very strong unit. Now, Scott Efros, you know, he's not going to really pitch in 2023 he's had tommy john surgery definitely an unfortunate scenario for the yankees but a lot more is going to be kind of given a lot more i guess usage and opportunity will be given to guys like ron marinaccio and greg weiser two of those uh you know young pitchers who we really need to step up marinaccio showed some great stuff last year we're going to discuss him obviously greg weiser uh throws the ball like a frisbee he's absolutely electric when his stuff is on he really started a little bit slow and then towards the end of the season i think he didn't give up a single hit over his last four appearances appearances if I'm not mistaken so he was really really good towards the end there and he projects to have a big role in this bullpen moving forward but there's a couple pieces that also going to look to have some bounce back seasons I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees brought back brought in another bullpen arm um this offseason you know whether it be, be via Glaber Torres trade we'll see kind of how they do that but Tommy Canely interesting pitcher there I do want to discuss him and what he brings obviously hasn't pitched a lot over the last couple seasons Ryan but you wrote a phenomenal article yesterday about why this bullpen is so great why it could be one of the best in the game this upcoming year um i'd love to get your your take uh, here's some information that you have for us and, and why you believe that is the case yeah so you know looking at the yankee bullpen in terms of just what makes them so good right and it's that depth their depth is absolutely phenomenal obviously the top of their bullpen is remarkable you know we're talking about uh you know clay holmes jonathan lewisga and wani peralta at the top you know as those top three guys and those three were absolutely nails to the yankees in the postseason you know if you take any of those three out of the equation i don't think the yankees get past the alds which i know it's hard for a lot of Yankee fans to hear this, but you know, you do have to give credit to a, a bullpen that gets you to an ALCS. Yes. They didn't win the ALCS. They didn't win a game in the ALCS, but it had nothing to do with the bullpen. It had everything to do uh, with the offense. Uh, and quite frankly, the starting pitching just running out of gas. I don't think uh, the Yankees starting pitching could handle, you know, just the amount of turnover between days. They, they really did not get a lot of rest between games uh, and they were pressed into action very quickly. Uh, but looking at the back end of this bullpen, right. You know, we're talking about their worst reliever being, Ron Marinacio, Lou Trevino, right? Like th these are the guys we look at as, you know, worst reliever candidates. Um, qu quite frankly, their, their bullpen is stacked, right? There's no other way to put it. Their, their bullpen is that good. Um, you know, they're going to be, in a, uh, they're going to be in a position where they're going to have uh, a lot of questions to ask themselves about who's staying on the roster or not. There are some guys who don't have, uh, you know, minor league options anymore, such as Domingo Herman, uh, Albert Abreu, you know, Lucas Lickie was one of those guys and he was traded. Uh, quite frankly, this team has an absolutely stellar bullpen that I just don't think the, that other teams can really, you know, match, you know, there's a reason why the Yankees were able to trade Lucas Lickie and the team that wanted him was a team that won a hundred games last year, 101 games last year, won their division was the reigning world series champions at that point in time. And was probably, a, it's probably a top three team in baseball, top two team in baseball, right now so you know we're, we're, we're talking about a team that definitely already had a pretty good bullpen and is using our scraps as someone who is a lock to make theirs right so you know quite frankly the Yankee bullpen is just that deep and they have so many guys who are so unbelievably nasty I mean good lord we I'm not even gonna mention the top guys because quite frank I'm not gonna mention Michael King I'm not gonna mention you know not even Mar Ron Marnasio we're gonna we're gonna leave that uh to we're gonna leave that to you know people who already know they're very good uh, Greg Weissert has phenomenal stuff, nearly 20 inches of horizontal sweep, a, a nearly his stuff plus in his slider is almost 200, which means almost hundred percent better than the league average slider in terms of pitch shape and pitch movement. That's ridiculous. Right. Uh, and that's not even uh, arguably, it's probably not even the best part about him, right? He has ridiculous vertical separation on his fat, fat forcing fastball on his changeup. It's why he succeeded very well against left-handed batters. He didn't do so well against righties, but I imagine as his command on his sinker and slider improved, that'll improve as well. He already, 
already can handle left-handed pitching, a left-handed hitting, and he's supposed to be someone who shouldn't handle left-handed hitting or be a right-handed specialist. He's got a really good arsenal. Uh, there are guys, you know, Carson Coleman is someone who dominated high A last year and came into double A and continued to crush probably going to start out in triple a next year he has a fastball that generates 16 inches of induced vertical break which is above that league average meaning it does qualify as a pitch that you throw up in the strike zone you know think you know garrett cole Luis severino frankie montas nesta cortez Carlos Rodon, these are all guys uh, who greatly uh, benefit from those riding fastballs. He also gets almost 19 inches of run on that fastball. He used it 80% of the time, and he got an above 35% whiff percentage. It is a unique fastball. There's not a single fastball in Major League Baseball that generates as much riding action with that much run. There's actually not even just a four-seam fastball in baseball that has 18-plus inches of horizontal run. So, you know, the Yankees have just – I mean, you've probably never heard of Carson Coleman. I, he's not even on the 40-man roster, and he's got absolutely filthy stuff. Michael King is going to come back into the fold. Michael King is ridiculous. We know that he's super good. Albert Abreu's I mean, the Yankees are probably going to have to get rid of Albert Abreu. Maybe they have to DFA him. And last year, he put up a 3-1-2 ERA and a sub-3 fit with the Yankees. He throws gas, and he has pretty good movement on his fastballs. And he has a slider that could still be improved, but is already a pretty good pitch. You know, like, that's your worst reliever. That's the guy that Yankee fans are clamoring to get rid of. You know what I mean? That's the guy who would make every other bullpen. Clark Schmidt, you know, he's supposed to be a starter. I, and he was potentially going to have a starter role uh, if he had to uh, this year. But the Yankees signing Carlos Rodon means he's not going to make the rotation unless there's an injury. Uh, quite frankly, Clark Schmidt's also really gross. If you look at his stuff plus, his pitching plus on all of his pitches, they're elite, elite, elite. So, you know, quite frankly, the Yankees just have so much depth at the back end of their bullpen. I could go on for days. Matt Crook. Uh, even Davey Garcia has improved his velocity dramatically. Uh, you know, I could go I could go to the – I mean, how far do we want to go with their bullpen? Do we want to branch into Randy Vasquez's of the world, who has over 3,000 RPMs on their uh, breaking ball? Clayton Beater, who I wrote about and has absolutely disgusting stuff. His slider is unhittable. Uh, I mean, we could go on for days. The, you know, even starters in their farm system, Will Warren, uh, Johnny Brito, right? You know, they have guys who just have really good stuff and are going to translate to the major league level very nicely. And I just named like two or three guys that aren't going to get a crack at the major league team probably for the entire season. So they're loaded. And that's, that's really the only way to look at it. So when you're looking at the high leverage bullpen arms on the back end of this roster, right? You're looking at Clay Holmes, you're looking at Jonathan Lewisica and, and for the record, you know, uh, you're actually writing an article right now about Johnny Lowe, and essentially he's looking to bounce back. You know, he had that shoulder injury that really shut him down towards the beginning of the season and impacted him the rest of the way. It was clear that he wasn't feeling his best. There was a couple of stretches where he looked dominant, and that was like, okay, that was the Lowe Isaac we know and love. Um, but if he can maintain that health next year, this is a guy who's going to be electric for the Yankees. He could be their best bullpen arm. He could be one of the best in baseball. That's the type of stuff that he has. So high leverage arms, you're probably looking at um, – I would say Loisica, Clay Holmes. I'd even throw Lou Trevino in there. And and by the way, what the Yankees have managed to do with bullpen arms who struggled previously with their with their previous teams. You know, you look at Clay Holmes and his numbers with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and then with the Yankees, they're night and day, different players entirely. Lou Trevino's another one of those guys. With Oakland last year, 32 innings pitched in 2022 with Oakland, 6.47 ERA. Um, obviously, you know, that was a pretty terrible number and the Yankees acquired him. Everyone's like, Oh, we don't really know what this is going to do. Uh, 67.3% left on base rate. He had 12.66 strikeouts per nine. Um, uh, but then he goes to the Yankees and suddenly he's a different player, right? Six, four, seven ERA suddenly 1.66 ERA over 21.2 innings. His strikeouts go down. His walks increase just a tad. His home runs per nine are slashed by more than half. And his 84% left on base rate is 13% better than it was. Um, across the board, he was just better. Home run to fly ball ratio, 20.8% in Oakland to 5.6% uh, with the Yankees. So they did something. They changed something. And, and out of nowhere, it seems like he found his groove. His barrel rate went from 9.4% to 3.4%. Exit max exit velocity you know, is irrelevant, essentially. But you know, you're looking at what the Yankees managed to do. I, it seems like they found a way to get the most out of Lou Trevino. These older guys, these veterans, even younger guys like uh, Clay Holmes, who's you know definitely in his prime and probably in his prime for the next couple of years. They they're just getting so much value out of players who otherwise nobody would be looking at. Right, they're bringing in these guys struggling with their respective clubs, and they're turning them into legitimately all star pitchers. Like Clay Holmes was elite. We we haven't had a, a pitcher, a bullpen arm 
performed that well in the first half of a season, and I don't even know how long. Clay Holmes was, you threw him out there, and you were almost guaranteed um, a save or whatever situation he was in, guaranteed to get out of the inning. He was just unbelievable. Second half of the year, he picked up that, I think it was a shoulder injury. It was a lat injury. I forget exactly what it was, but um, you could tell it was it was affecting him. His fundamentals were off. His you know his his the movement of his pitches were dipping out of the strike zone um, a little bit too much. That you know hitters were kind of seeing it early. Um, everything about him just looked a little bit off. His velocity dipped. So you know this is a, a player that when healthy is elite. They have to manage their workloads a little bit better um, because I think he got a little fatigued down the stretch. So you know. Ryan, when you're looking at this bullpen, the high leverage arms, Lou Trevino, Ron Mar- even I'd see Ron Marinaccio is also a high leverage guy. I'd throw him in there in the eighth inning. I'd close a couple games with him. Johnny Lowe, um, Clay Holmes. How do you mitigate fatigue for these guys? Because ultimately, they ran out of gas. And, and I don't even mention Michael King. Apologies. He's going to be back for the regular season. He's arguably our highest leverage bullpen arm. Ridiculous amount of depth. Like you said, I just keep remembering names. And I keep convincing myself how much better this bullpen is every time a new name pops into my head. If we had Scott Efros, God help the MLB, that, that would be ridiculous. But, um, you know, look look ahead to 2024 and you got him back. So, and a lot of, a ton of team control. I think he has control, we have control over him for the next four or five years, maybe more, maybe six years, right? Something like that. So I think he was a rookie last season. So when you're looking at this bullpen, though, the back end, how are you trying to mitigate fatigue? Who, who, what kind of players, what kind of pitchers there? You're like, all right, we got to make sure we don't, get them over a certain amount of innings. We have to make sure they're good for the playoffs. Yeah. So the top guy, you know, the top way to do it is by just use it, utilizing your depth, you know, being strategic with your IL stints, making sure, you know, be over cautious. You know what I mean? I think the Yankees were under cautious last year. And I think it cost them, you know, look at Ron Marnasio. He shouldn't have been pitching games. And when the Yankees had clinched it, uh, you know, he got injured against Baltimore. That's that's where he got hurt. That's, you know, where he was – he knocked himself out for the rest of the postseason. The Yankees should never have been in a position where he was pitching those games, right? There's there's no reason to pitch him in those games. You gain nothing from it. You've already won your division. There's no reason to, right? And even even if you were a game or two games away from clinching the division, you know, Ron Marinasio is not going to be a difference maker. If you collapse, you know, a seven-game lead in nine games, it's not because you didn't have Ron Marinasio, right? You have to you have to have Ron Marinasio on that postseason team, especially at that point in time, you know, where, as you mentioned, you know, there was no Michael King. That bullpen was three guys and Lou Trevino uh, sprinkled in there, really, for for big a lot of their high-leverage innings. I imagine Marinasio could have eased some of the fatigue in there and perhaps the Yankees steal a game or two against Houston. I think of game one. Game one really really sits in my brain as the game where it's like, man, if the Yankees didn't run out of gas, I think they would have been able to have the bullpen to outlast Houston in game one uh, and perhaps steal a game. Right. And when you, when you win that one game, you know, I'm not saying it changed the trajectory of, a, of, of that series, but you know, you want to win as many games as possible. You at least have a shot. You know, even if you're down three, one in a series, right. You still have a shot, right. All I care about is this team having a shot to win the series. Um, And, and, and quite frankly, you know, the Yankees need to make sure that they, they're precautionary with these things. You know, if a guy has some shin soreness, you know, place him in the IL. It's fine. You have depth, right. Oh no, you don't have Ron Marnasio for 15 days. Let me just call up Greg Weissert, who has, you know, pitches that don't look human. Like it doesn't look like a human being should be able to make a slower move that much. Uh, the horror, you know what I mean? Or, oh no, you're going to have to, you know, you, you, you put Canley on the IL for, for 15 days. Stint. Oh no, Clark Schmidt's going to pitch. Like, I don't really see the issue here. There's really no downside to it. Like we're talking about good pitchers right now. We're not talking about terrible pitchers. Uh, you know, oh no, uh, you know, you're going to have to make, uh, even for your rotation, this is important too, because one of those five guys are going to become your a reliever in the postseason, right? You know, oh gosh, the horror. You're going to like the Yankees, what the Yankees did with, with Severino was smart. The Yankees doing what they did with Severino was really smart. It kept them healthy for the postseason. And he was a huge reason why the Yankees got to the ALCS. I know his start, they didn't win that game, but he put them in a position to win. And quite frankly, he got, he ate through that game. He was supposed to get knocked out early. They, the Cleveland, Cleveland had him on the ropes early and they, he, he grinded through it and he put them in a position to win. So quite frankly, if you have your guys, your rotation is going to be important for Carlos Rodon too. Carlos Rodon is a guy that you're going to need to manage his innings, right? You, you don't want to make him throw 200 innings in the regular season if he's not needed to do that, right? Why why make him do that, right? You're going to have a guy who's fatigued by the end of the year. Don't don't make him do that, right? Limit him to 170 innings. I don't care, right? You, you, yeah, sure, it'll, hold, it'll hurt his chance of winning the Cy Young, but I care about winning the World Series, right? We win one World Series with Carlos Rodon on their, on their contract, and none of the, none of 
not that none of what happens after matters, but you'll live with what happened that what happens after. You're you're fine with it, right? Frankie Montas is another example. Frankie Montas is a guy who had an injury last year, and quite frankly, if the Yankees were a little more precautionary with him, perhaps they would have shelved them a little bit longer. And in the postseason, the towards the back end of the regular season, he would have been able to start games for them. Maybe he starts game one, or maybe he starts game two, and and those are games maybe the Yankees end up winning, or maybe Montas able to come out of the bullpen, right? Like there there were situations where the Yankees could have sorely used pitching, and they didn't because those guys were banged up because the Yankees are pushing them too hard. The Yankees can't let that happen again. You know, you have depth, right? You have a ton of depth, so much depth. Uh, you know, there, there are guys in AAA right now. I can I can name I, – I, I'm looking at the five guys that are at, on uh, the 40-man roster. That's Brito, Crook, Vasquez, Garcia, and Schmidt. Um, if any, any of these five guys have to pitch at all during the year, I'm not looking at it as a bad thing, right? You know, I really don't think it's a bad thing if any of those five guys – are pitching, you know, innings throughout the year. It's not going to be 60, 70 innings a, a, as your setup guy. It'll be, you know, 20 or 30 innings at most, you know, just spot starting or, you know, filling in a role or, or filling in some garbage time innings. That's five guys right there that I think are all competent major league pitchers uh, at some point during the 2023 season. Uh, and that's in AAA and that's just on your 40 man. We're not even counting, you know, King isn't on the fan graphs projected depth chart because he hasn't been officially removed from the IL, even though he will be, you know, Domingo Herman is still on this depth chart. Albert Abreu is still on this depth chart. Like the Yankees are going to be fine. They're 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 going to be fine pitching wise. They can they can mitigate you know guys. They can put guys early on the IL or be precautionary or, or take that extra measure of safety because they'll they'll survive. They'll lose maybe like point one WAR, which means nothing for your win total. If you lose a division because you lost it by one game, right? Like I don't think it's because you IL the guy for fifteen days. It's it's because you didn't play better than them. Uh, you need to keep yourself healthy for the postseason, and I think this team is is, is so loaded to do that. I mean, for Christ's sake, two of these guys, we, we, two of the guys, the major league roster, are probably gonna have to get traded anyway. So, I mean, we're talking about guys who might not even be here next 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 month, right? You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, we traded for Indigo Diaz. You know, he's probably gonna play some sort of uh, role, perhaps if he progresses the way he should. He has a 95 mile an hour fastball that climbs up to 98 and 18.9 inches of induced vertical break. That's Garrett Cole type vertical movement, right? So they'll do fine on the pitching side of the ball. There's going to be at least one or two guys that are going to come out of nowhere and absolutely dominate. It happens every year. Absolutely. So there's one other guy I do want to discuss um, as you know, we've kind of talked about a lot of these bullpen arms, but we haven't talked much about Tommy Canely. Um, obviously he's the guy we brought in two years, $11.5 million. Dollars. Um, we're expecting him to kind of fill a role. He hasn't pitched much over the last three seasons, notably only tossed for the Los Angeles Dodgers last year, what, 12.1 innings, 12.2 innings, and then one inning in 2020, missed all of 2021, obviously had the Tommy John surgery uh, with the Yankees, and then, you know, they let him go, signs with the Dodgers, and, you know, six about $6 million per season is definitely a hefty amount for a pitcher who hasn't pitched essentially in three years, but if he does return um, to his previous form, he can be very effective for this team, right? 33 years old. He's a big culture guy for this Yankee team, brings a lot of energy. He's been on winning teams. You know, obviously the Dodgers last year, um, you know, doing some stuff in the postseason and getting knocked out, evidently. Uh, he recorded 2.84 ERA, 314 XFIP, 995 strikeouts per nine, with an 85.4% left on base rate. Again, small sample size, 12.2 innings. But, you know, he's got some good stuff, right? It is. His 2019 metrics is kind of what I'm looking at here with the Yankees. Some good stuff. That's was last like significant sample size. 96th percentile in strikeout rate, 80th percentile in chase rate, uh, 64th percentile in barrel percentage. Um, you know, fastball velocities in the 92nd percentile in whiff rate. 96th percentile has got a decent uh, changeup uh, forcing fastball combination. When it's when it's both working, they're very very good. Um, you know, he threw those in 2019 pretty evenly. Uh, he was change up 52% of the time and four seam 44, 43.7% of the time. Um, so, you know, you're definitely looking at a pitcher who, who can get it done with those pitches Four seam fastball uh, 287 average against in the, in 2019 during that bigger sample size of 61.1 innings. So um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on him, Ryan. Like how would, how do you see Tommy Canely finding a role in this, in this bullpen? Because right now, Am I trusting him in high leverage situations? Absolutely not. Maybe he eats some innings for you. Maybe, you know, he proves it, it, he could work his way up to high leverage. But right now, I just kind of getting him into the mix. I think $6 million for him for, uh, you know, I guess $12 million for two years is definitely feels like a lot for a guy who just hasn't pitched much in the last three seasons. But it seems like the Yankees really like his stuff, and they, they seem like he can make a big impact with us moving forward. 
Yeah, so, you know, one of the big things that are, are obviously a big concern is the lack of innings pitched. Uh, and, you know, definitely look at that. Uh, you look at the fact that he got uh, the money he did, which was, uh, I think it's $5.8 million a year, so roughly $6 million a year for two years, a little bit under $12 million. Um, you know, I, I understand. I definitely understand the uh, hesitancy uh, to want to put him in high leverage and then also feel like he's a guy that you can trust uh, to pitch in big games or that you can trust to even pitch for a full season. Uh, but I look at his stuff. I look at the changeup, right? And I think that shift to being a really heavy changeup uh, reliever is is tangible. He could definitely do it. Um, you know, I don't think the Yankees would have invested the money they did into him if they didn't believe in him. Um, I think the reason there's a reason the Dodgers really liked him. There's a reason the Dodgers bring them in. There's a reason the Dodgers paid him to rehab with them, basically. Uh, oh. Kenley's stuff is still really, really good. Uh, I, I don't think he's someone who's going to come in and on day one be the close or anything like that. But, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if the Yankees press him into the sixth or seventh inning pretty quickly. Um, and the reason for that is because of – I think he's already battle-tested in New York. You know, I think that that matters, right? You know, I'm a big numbers guy. Don't get me wrong. But but being battle-tested in New York, definitely there is a factor uh, of that. You know, being able to handle the Bronx, being able to handle high-pressure situations. Tommy Canley has pitched in a multitude of postseason series for a, a, a very long time quite frankly. Uh, and he's been through it all. I think, you know, his changeup is really good. His fastball isn't, you know, the shape on his fastball isn't what, 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 what it was a couple years ago, uh, but it still generates a lot of vertical separation. There's a big gap in vertical separation there. I believe it's roughly, uh, it's over 13 inches for sure, uh, which is above that 10 inch threshold you want to be at for a fastball and a changeup. Uh, he'll get a lot of swings and misses. He'll handle left-handed pitching, uh, hitting well, and he'll also handle right-handed hitting well, as he always has in his career. Uh, so he's someone you can throw against both handedness uh, I, I get that's a word, bad way. That's a terrible grammar, but uh, I guess you guys get my point. Uh, he's someone he's very versatile, which I think is something the Yankees really like. They can throw him in, as you mentioned, you know, maybe not high, highest level, highest leverage situations at first, but you could throw him in the sixth inning and you can also close the game with him in August, right? Like that's just who Tommy Canley is, right? If the Yankees have a starter get knocked down the third inning, you can throw in Tommy Canley. If the Yankees need to get a lefty out, throw in Tommy Canley. If you need to get a tough righty out, throw in Tommy Canley, right? Like there are just so many situations where you can just throw it to Tommy Canley. You know, you mentioned Lou Trevino earlier. I see both these relievers as kind of the same caliber of like, I could totally see them closing a game for the Yankees in like July, but I could also see them like, throwing the sixth inning of a game where the Yankees are up like five, nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're, they're just going to be used whenever the situation calls for it. And I think that's an important part of this bullpen. There aren't a lot of guys. There's probably one guy and it's either Abreu or Herman where you wouldn't throw them in a close game in the seventh or eighth inning. Like you wouldn't rip Boone. If in May you threw Tommy Canley in a one run game, it really wouldn't be Boone's fault. If Canley came in and blew it right. Unless Canley was like had an eight ERA at that point in time, but the Yankees have really deep pitching and they have a lot of pitching that'll handle high leverage situations. I think Canley is one of those guys. Uh, but as you mentioned that, is, uh, you'll have to wait and see there in terms of durability for a full season. I think that's the big question, whether he'll you know be able to handle 50, 60 innings. Steamer really is aggressive for his innings pitch. They have, I believe, at over 60 innings pitched, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, they have at 60 exactly, excuse me. So I think that's a really aggressive number for a guy who hasn't pitched 60 innings since in total since 2020. Uh, but if they believe he can get to that point, if the Yankees are confident he can get to 50 innings, you know, I Quite frankly, I think this will be a steal for the Yankees, especially considering the reliever market. And I think the upside for Kenley is really high. He was dominant in his stint last year, uh, though it was a small sample. But high ground ball guy, ton of strikeouts, not too many walks, a bit of a home run problem, but I don't think that's going to affect him too much. He's kind of had a home run problem with New York before, and it really didn't stop him from dominating. So very excited for Tommy Kenley in 2023, and I'm very excited for this bullpen in general. Yeah, I mean, look, at the very least, he's going to contribute more than Chapman and Britain together, right? Britain obviously injured, Chapman awful. Um, if you get a good version of Canely, not a great, but even a good version, you're getting a lot more value out of him than those two guys. Um, and you're also just getting a great guy, right? Chapman bailed on his team in the postseason. Said, I'm not coming, I'm not going. If I don't have a locked-in job, I'm sitting at home um, in Miami, where the hell he was, and I'm, I'm just cashing out. And Canley's not going to do that. You know what I mean? If, if they're like, you got to compete for a postseason spot, he's going to give it his all. And he's a great dude to have in the locker room. So um, there is a value. It's hard to gauge how much it's worth monetarily, but it's undeniable that it is valuable and it is worth something. It's just a matter of trying to figure out what it is. So uh, end of the day, Yankees have a tremendous bullpen, a lot of talent. And the, the thing I like most about it is they have a lot of young talent and they have a lot of guys they brought in for cheap that they turned into elite level arms like Clay Holmes, even Trevino. I wouldn't say he's elite, but he's definitely good. Um, and, and we'll see what they can do 
Johnny Lowe, bounce back season. You know, obviously you got Michael King coming back. Hopefully he looks good coming off Tommy, Tommy John surgery and whatnot. I think he'll be fine. So I am excited to see how this team can progress, how the bullpen can definitely um, kind of just amp up, ramp up and, and, and give themselves a chance to put that, put together a stellar 2023 campaign and help this team get to the postseason, and maybe push for a world series. That's obviously the ultimate goal, but guys, I'd love to hear your perspectives below on the YouTube comments about this bullpen, your thoughts about the individual players, anyone you think might be a liability or a strength or just opinions and takes on any of them. Always happy to hear your perspectives and have some good conversations below. So appreciate that. As always have a fantastic rest of your day, like, and subscribe. Don't forget. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Thank you.